Okay, this is episode eight in this ongoing series where we're building a mobile application in Flutterflow. And in this one, we're talking very much about code expressions. Now, if you don't know much about code expressions, then this is a good entry introduction into using them in your own particular projects. And of course, we're gonna use them in our application to perform a calculation. And we're gonna apply it in one place. And we're also going to make a slight change in that code expression. And we're gonna use that directly with a progress bar widget. So let's get into the video and let's get cracking. Okay, so let's have a look then at what we are going to cover in this particular episode. So here is the final running application, and we're going to concentrate our efforts on this little bit that's happening here, because it doesn't look a lot on screen, but there's quite a lot going on. We've got kind of code expressions, we've got stacks, we've got further widgets that we're going to apply to our user interface. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to calculate the progress of our goal. So we're going to have a number of tasks with inside our goal, of course, and we're going to track its progress. Now, we've already looked looked at the number of kind of tasks that we got and the number of completed ones, but we're going to use the values that are stored within inside our SQLite database. And we're going to kind of calculate this particular kind of uh, percentage of completion. So let me just demonstrate that to you now. I'm just going to click on this particular goal. I'm going to add in a, a test task. Let's just do this test task, test task one and do a test uh, description one like that, hit create like that. And I'm just gonna create another one. So let's just do test task two, and then test dis test description two like that, hit create. So we've now got two tasks. Now, as you can see here, I've not completed any. So if I go back, you can see here, we've got two tasks available, but none are completed. And of course we are 0%. If I click back on this again, if I now complete one of these and go back, you can see here now that I've got two of one. So one is obviously clearly there completed. You can see now I'm running at 50%. Click back on that, click on number two there. And you can see here now that I'm 100%. So that's what we're gonna focus on in this particular ep episode. Gonna do a little bit of further UI kind of construction, and then we'll focus on the detail as far as a code expression. So let's, uh, let's now move into that now. Okay, so back on the home page, then let's now start some work on the user interface. So what I'm gonna introduce you to now is a stack widget. Now the stack widget is gonna allow us to kind of layer widgets on top of each other. And that's what we're gonna to need to do with our progress bar because we've kind of got the progress bar there, but we want to kind of layer just on top of the progress bar, another container. Then of course, with inside that particular container, there's gonna be another text widget as well. So that's what the stack widget will provide to us, a way of us layering widgets on top of each other. So with the progress bar selected here on the left hand side, let's just right click there. Let's say wrap widget. We're going to choose the stack widget just there. Now you won't see anything obvious with inside the user interface, but you certainly will notice that our stack widget now has become a parent of the progress bar. Now that basically now means is that every widget that I apply underneath our stack widget will know that it'll be then positioned on top of the widget that is just before it. So let me show you that if I just add another container in here like that, you can now see that, although it looks a little bit odd because it's rather big, you can see that this container widget is just over the top there of our progress bar. So the key thing to remember is that it kind of runs in the order kind of running down. So every time you put something uh, below, then you'll know there's always going to be on stack on the one that is just before it with inside the widget tree hierarchy. So with this container widget now set, we need to set some properties of this because it's a bit too big. So we're going to reduce the size down to then say 40 on the width like that. The height, we're just going to keep this super small. So just going to put 25 there. And we're going to want to set some other properties here. So the border color, for example, is currently unset. We're going to want to put a, a very sort of very subtle kind of uh, border around. Now I've got a particular color in the theme called Ascent 3 that will just give us that kind of very subtle border that's going to kind of go around the edges. We're going to want to change our border radius as well. So let's choose this option here, which will be our uniform radius. So it's going to be the same all the way around. And let's put here 16 and that will just kind of curve the edges. There. If I just click away there, in fact, you can just see here on the ghost widget here, you can see the effect that we're starting to see, which is all looking really good. So what we now need to do is we now need to position this particular widget within inside the stack itself. So I'm just gonna choose the stack option here, the stack widget on the left-hand side, just select that. 
Now on the right hand side, you see we've got this a default child alignment. I can position the widget wherever I would like, but of course I just want to position it in the center. So just by choosing the center, you can see now that it sits really, really nicely inside of the center of the kind of the, the overall kind of look of the UI that we need. So it's as simple as that guys, it's really straightforward to use a stack widget. And once you kind of know some of the options that's available to you, but um, that's all that you really need to know for the stack widget in this particular example. We now with inside our container, we now want to hit the plus and we're going to choose a text widget. So we just got that inside and we can now set some properties of our text widget itself. So on the right hand side, let's just scroll down here. Let's choose where it says body medium. Let's just make this nice and small. So I'm going to go to small here. The font size, I'm just going to reduce down to 10. I'm going to kind of force a, a sort of size on there and everything else I believe we've set up just as we want it. Now let's just go to the top here. Let's just give this something that's a little bit more realistic. So I'm just going to put a hundred percent in there. So we get a, a visual representation of what it will look like. So next up, we're going to want to now center our text with inside this particular container. That's again, super straightforward because the container is going to kind of hold all the cards for us there. So oh, just select the container there. Now just scroll down here. You can see now I've got this child alignment. I can just simply hit the little center option here and then everything will be nicely centered with inside the container itself. So that is as simple as it comes right off the bat in terms of getting the widgets that we need to have set up. We can now move on to the next bit where we can start now talking about code expressions. Okay, so there's going to come a point in time when you're going to want to use code expressions in your own project. Now think of a code expression as a way perhaps of how to calculate something. If you've got a couple of different numbers that you want to kind of do some calculation, you might want to do some arithmetic operation on it. For example, you might want to divide or do some addition or subtraction or multiplication, then that is a perfect place for a code expression. It could be that you want to kind of return the length of a string or anything like that. You can also do that with inside a code expression. Expression. So what we need to do in our application is we're going to pass in two values into our code expression, the number of tasks that we've got and the number of completed tasks. And we're going to want to do that calculation to return back a number which represents the percentage that we are through our particular tasks. Now, let me show you how that is done. So this is where we are now going to apply that code expression. But what we've got here, as you can see, I've just renamed my widgets here, as I said, I would do in this series as we move forward. So it's nothing different to what we did in the previous segment, just a naming thing. What I'm gonna do is move over to the selector here. And what we're gonna to want to do is, well, first we're gonna to want to add a text, uh, to combine the text. We're gonna to want to, catenate, to concatenate two strings together. So this is gonna be our code expression or the result of our code expression. I'm gonna add the text. All I'm gonna simply do here is put a percentage in because I'm not gonna return back the percentage from our code expression. I'm just gonna return back a double data type there to represent the, uh, the percentage that we are through our particular tasks. So just select the text one selector here. We're going to choose a code expression and then that pops this particular box. I'm just going to make it a little bit larger here just so we can see what's going on completely. So what the way you set up a code expression is we need to kind of define what our arguments are, our input arguments. Okay, now we, again, we've got two here. So I'm just going to choose add argument. I'm going to choose our var. And the first one I'm going to say is the number of tasks like that. Now this is going to be a type integer. And I'm going to just delete this here because in, we're going to come back shortly. And we're going to change this to the real values that's coming back from our SQLite database. But just for now, I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to kind of hard code these values in to demonstrate. So I'm just going to say, in theory, that we've got, say, a hard coded value of four tasks completely. I'm going to add in another argument here, just select that. Let's just change this now. And I'm going to just going to say completed tasks like that. Now with our type, again, this is just going to be integer. I'm going to delete the that out of there, and I'm just going to set a value of two. Now, of course, if I've got four total tasks and I've only completed two, then technically, technically I want to return back 50% or at least 50 to represent that with inside my user interface. So that's good. Now let's move down here. Now our return type here, we can choose a number of different uh, types here that's going to return back from our code expression. Now, in our case, we're going to want to choose a double like that. And I'm not, it's not going to be a list or anything like that. But of course, you might want to be doing integers or you might want to be returning back a true or a false or maybe a manipulated string or anything like that. But in our case, we're just going to want to return back a, a double value. Now, this is where 
all of the main sort of stuff happens really is inside this particular expression. So as we know, we've got the number of tasks and we've got completed tasks. So just as a demonstrator, I could say number of tasks like that. I could say times, just using an asterisk, and I could, could say completed tasks like that. So long as these two values here match up to the arguments that you've got added in, then you certainly wouldn't get any particular error. So this just gives you an example of how to use those. Now, what we are going to do is we're going to build out a brand new expression here, which is a little bit complex maybe to understand, but I'll talk you through each part of it and hopefully it will give you a good example of maybe something a little bit more complex where we're making a decision. So let's quickly do that now. Okay, so let's type our code expression in then, and I'll talk you through it as we move through. So what I'm gonna say is a number of tasks like that, I'm gonna say is not equal to zero. I'm gonna to want to now carry out this next calculation. So if it's not equal to zero, we can then say a question mark. That now allows us to now carry out this next kind of calculation. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do an opening bracket here. Now I'm gonna say completed tasks divided by the number of tasks like that. So in our instance here, we've got uh, four tasks, and but we've got two of them which are completed. So that's going to give us 0 0.5. Now what we need to do now is we now need to times that by 100. And that's going to give us 50%. Kind of. It's going to give us 0 0.50, which we're going to manipulate in a few moments. Now that is the result of our expression. But of course, what happens if the number of tasks are not equal to zero? Well, we just want to return back a default value, which in our case is going to be zero. And the way that you do that is just very simply then a colon and then zero like that. So just to recap then, so we're saying if the number of tasks are not equal to zero, I want you to carry out this particular calculation. Otherwise, just return back a zero. Now, what we can now do is we can now say check errors like that. And this should come back with no errors, nice and green. That is great. So we've got 50 coming back now. So of course, this is a double. So it's going to return a 50.0. So let's just demonstrate that. And I'll come back to the code expression. And I'll show you then how we can then format the the result of the code expression to just return back 50, which we need for display with inside our UI. So I'm just going to hit confirm on here and just hit confirm here. You can see oh, I've got the code expression here. Let's just restart our application here. So let's just hit the restart option here. Of course, if you've got local run up and running at the moment. So in just a moment, that is there. Let's flip over to our application here. So here's the running version. You can see how I got 50 point zero. Now we don't want to have the kind of the point zero. So how do we get rid of that? Well, let's go back to our application. Let's just move now back into the text combination here, move back to the code expression. Let's move, move down here and we can now adjust the format here. So I encourage you to kind of have a look at the different format options that are available here, but there's nothing here that takes our fancy. So we're going to do a custom format. So I'm just going to choose a custom here. Now I encourage you to kind of hit this little option here. This will take you to a web page, which we'll talk a little bit about kind of how you can use custom formats. So I'm just going to put a representation here of sort of our, our numbers here. So I'm going to do hash hash, and then I'm going to do a zero here. So these are kind of single digit values here. Now, if I just hit confirm here and then hit confirm again, if I now go back and just go to then the to the hot reload, our application will now do a quick refresh. So let's now move over to then the simulator. And there it is, we've got 50%. And just to prove it for good measure, let's get ourselves to 100%. Just go to text combination here, move to the code expression. Let's now change these hard coded values. Go to completed tasks here. Let's just choose four, hit confirm, hit confirm. Let's just do a hot reload again. And very quickly, once that's done, we should see the application then change to 100%. There it is, 100%. So we can see now that it's responding to that. So that is quite simply the code expression now all set up. What we're now going to do is we're going to take that code expression and we're also going to make, or at least apply it, but make a very, very slight change in order to work with our progress bar here as well. So that will also respond to then the uh, the, the percentage that we've kind of got set um, as a result of the code expression. So let's go and do that now. Okay, so with our progress text selected, let's make a copy of the code expression. So just move over here, 
go to the copy here, copy the variables. We've got everything we need, so just cancel that. Let's select the progress bar. And you remember when we built the UI originally, we set this as 0 0.5. So what we need to do is we need to make changes to our code expression to return back a value that looks just like that. So we've kind of got a, a value of 0 0.5 for 50% or 0 0.1 for 10% or 1.0 for 100%. So how do we do that? Well, let's move to the progress value again. Let's paste our code expression in. So we kind of got all of our uh, sort of our efforts that we did previously that everything else is pretty well much the same, but we need to make some little adjustments down here because we're not going to return him back a 50% or a 60% or at least 50 or 60 to represent that. Let's change this to 1.0 and then let's change this then to naught point nor like that. If I just check errors, that should be all good. We just need to make sure as well that we've got this set as double, which we have. And this is the only change that we need to make. So certainly if we have 50%, then we only know that we're going to return back a 0 0.5, bit like what we had hard-coded here on the right-hand side. We've got no formatting going on down here, so everything is just as we need it. Just hit confirm there. Let's just do a quick hot reload, and hopefully our progress bar should move up to 100 on refresh. So let's have a look here if it moves up to the top. There it is. So that's all nicely set for us. We know that we've now got our response here in terms of the values that we've hard-coded, but of course we don't want to work with hard-coded values. We're going to want to quickly now change those to the SQLite database values. So let's go and do that now. Okay, so firstly, let's make the adjustment to our progress text. Um, it's going to be the same for both, actually. So just going to move over to text combination. Let's move to our code expression. Of course, remember, we hard coded these particular values in, but of course, we don't want to do that. So we're now going to select the number of tasks from our SQLite database. So just choose a selector here. Let's go to the get goals row because that's where we are at. And you can see here we've got the number of tasks. So just choose that Then move down here to the completed task. Let's just choose the value here. Here, go to the row itself and we're going to see the number of tasks completed. That is all that we need to do. Just hit confirm, hit confirm there. Let's quickly just do that now for the progress bar itself. So just move the code expression. Let's go back here. Let's delete that value out of here. Let's choose a selector, get goals row. Let's choose the number of tasks like that. Let's do the same for the completed tasks. Choose a selector here get goals row and let's choose the number of tasks completed. Now hit confirm and that is all that we need to do. If I just do a hot reload now, you're going to find everything will kind of go back to square one because of course those values are not currently set realistically in our database in terms of a positive perspective. So I'll just move over there now. You can see everything is then at 0% and the progress bar is completely empty. So that kind of sets ourselves up nicely when we move into the section of then working on the number of of tasks and actually populating those values with inside our database. So there you go, that's a wrap for this particular episode where we looked at code expressions. If you are watching this on YouTube, please do like the video, really do appreciate your likes on this particular series. And of course, if you're not a subscriber, then please do subscribe to the channel as well. And of course, more importantly, if you are not a member of the Digital Pros No Code Academy, the links are on the screen at the moment. So please do head over there and hopefully I hope to see you part of that community very, very soon. So until the next video, I'll see you soon.